If you want to build SaaS, would you choose a tech stack that slows you down or one that helps you move faster? The answer is obvious, but as developers, we often pick tools, get attached to them and ignore better options. That's exactly what happened to me. For a year, I built SaaS with a single tech stack. It got the job done, but building features felt slow and tedious, while other SaaS builders seemed to go 10 times faster. So did I explore the alternatives? No. I kept hearing this advice, pick a tech stack and stick to it. What matters is that you pick one tech stack and you stick to it. So I buried my head in the sand. I made videos praising my setup and I lied without even realizing it. Four web apps later, I couldn't ignore the frustration anymore. Things had to change. That's when I discovered what was really holding me back. My SaaS stack wasn't as good as I said it was. In fact, it sucked. But here's the good news. Once I admitted that, I could fix it. I stopped following Sandbite advice, looked at what was actually slowing me down and rebuilt my tech stack from the ground up. And now I believe every developer deserves a tech stack that gives them superpowers. Here's my journey to finding mine. The thing about front-end and back-end development is that they're simple enough on their own, but as SaaS builders, we have to combine both, and that's where things get messy. Some tools take back-end and front-end into account, like Next.js has React and server-side rendering. But other tools focus on just one thing, like the deployment tool I've been using for a long time, Serverless Framework. It optimizes for just one thing, deploying serverless functions, but ignores that all-important developer experience. In other words, how fast you actually build features. Serverless Framework deploys your infrastructure to AWS from a single template, but the biggest problems I've had have been slow feedback after making code changes, having to write too much boilerplate code, and YAML that's fought me every step of the way. Thing is, even though I face these problems on a daily basis, I didn't want to admit that I was stuck in a hole. Instead of fixing my problems, I just dug even deeper. After building four web apps, I had a process that worked with a ton of custom code to make serverless framework fit into my workflow. But something still fell off. I'd tried custom tools like Vercel that could deploy in seconds. So why did my setup take minutes? Although I was deploying into AWS from a single template, it still wasn't a smooth process. I knew it needed to be faster, but had no idea how to make that happen. And you know how it is when it feels like everybody's going faster than you? You're crawling along at a snail's pace. You seem to waste all your time waiting for deployments and you forget any previous successes and focus only on the failures right now. It can leave you wondering, maybe I don't have what it takes after all. That's when I lost all motivation to keep building. Desperate to find an alternative way, I turned to Google. I stumbled on an article that described the exact pain points I was feeling. It was like someone had reached into my brain and put my frustrations into words. Even better, it wasn't just a rant, it was written by a team of developers that had a solution. This gave me hope, and if I wanted to keep building SaaS, I'd have to try out their tool. The tool I found is called SST Serverless Stack. It's designed to help developers deploy apps into AWS as easily as possible. At first I was skeptical, but the first tutorial I tried was uploading images to an AWS S3 bucket, which was basically my first web app, a YouTube thumbnail comparison tool. Except this time it was effortless. Suddenly I felt motivated again and decided to rewrite my first SaaS with SST. At the same time, just for a challenge, I also rewrote the front end from Vue.js to React, something I covered in the previous video. But SST showed me something I didn't expect. My previous developer experience was terrible. This one was 10 times faster. So here are four lessons I learned along the way that you can apply to your own situation. One, get fast feedback. When you make a code change, especially to backend code, you should be able to test it immediately. SST runs constantly in the background and watches for any changes. It updates your live app and even points remote APIs to your local code which makes everything feel so much faster. Automate as much config as possible. Wiring values between your infrastructure and your code shouldn't require huge config files. SST has a feature called links designed to allow your code to access AWS resources without configuration. Three, avoid reinventing the wheel. Writing the same code again and again is slow and brittle, but the great thing about SST is it provides high-level components for apps like Next.js, which creates all the necessary resources in AWS and sets up permissions automatically. Four, build your back-end infrastructure with code. 
YAML sounds good in practice, but it breaks down when you want to conditionally create resources. SST uses TypeScript, so you can write conditionals naturally, but without any plugins. Look, I'll be honest, rewriting my app in SST wasn't easy. No new tool ever is, but it was so much better than what I had before. And after a week of deleting all the boilerplate from my previous setup, I pushed the new version of my app to production. Oh my God, it worked. Yes. All the previous stress that you had just melts away and you just wish you'd found this thing sooner. Then you can just <sighs> sigh with relief feel excited about what you're going to build in the future and tell yourself this shit's on baby so could sst be part of my tech stack going forward absolutely it works for me but that doesn't mean it's for everyone so how can you design your own tech stack look turning your ideas into reality on the internet should be as fun as possible that way you can turn it into a daily habit to actually get results and if you pick the perfect tech stack first time like some SaaS builders that's great but if you don't, like me, changing your tech stack isn't a sign of lack of focus, it's a sign of growth. So here's what I recommend to find something that works. First, write down the biggest thing that's slowing you down right now in your development process. For me, it was having to manually redeploy every time I changed an API. Then research two to three ways to fix it. Ask ChatGPT, ask a colleague. You might be just one tool away from a completely different dev experience. And yes, switching tools takes some effort, but a little short-term pain can lead to long-term momentum. That's why I'm excited to add SST to my tech stack for my next project. And it's the first tool I've tried in a while that's made me feel like I have superpowers. So why not make it your mission to find the tools that make you feel the same? See you in the next one.